All right, so you've seen it all over the place. These seemingly really smart people, or maybe not so smart, doing something that seems kind of dumb, lounging in ice water, hurling themselves even into it, and then telling you how much healthier they are because of it. And when it comes to stiffness and male reproductive health, you got to think, how could this possibly help? Because it seems odd, because we know you knew as a young child that the slightest amount of cold water in the fastest way could create shrinkage, right? So how could something like cold water that clearly will stop your fun dead in the tracks actually really help you perform better, right? Well, let's talk about this a little bit. So you can think back to the very first time as a young gentleman that you realized whether you were on a date you were in that cold swimming pool or in the back seat of the folks of your folks car. And I grew up in the Midwest. So it was cold, you know, so it's so cold that you're, you know, you realize that at that point, that cold was not actually your real friend, right? So let's look at the science behind the phenomena of these cold ice baths and how this practice could either help you or hinder your sexual performance. Now, plunging into a cold bath is not a new phenomenon. Now, the practice of cold dipping, you can actually see it going all the way back to ancient Egyptian times when plunging into the Nile River symbolized cleansing, uh, cleansing of sins and, and the renewal of, of, of the soul. So ancient Egyptians were actually really smart. And if they believed that cold waters could wash away impurities, ensuring a smooth journey into the afterlife, then why wouldn't we embrace this idea of cold spring? cold plunges. Now, when speaking about the health benefits, I think it really makes more sense instead of just to talk about these cold ice baths that look crazy to those of you who can't even imagine wanting to do something like that, but more so to speak in terms of cold exposure in general, because you're likely like most people and kind of like me, you know, you could fathom a cold shower. You can even fathom being outside in the cold without a jacket or, you know, without the things that you need, but it's really hard to idealize a cold plunge in a iced bath. So let's talk about cold exposure as it relates particularly to male erectile function and maleness. So, so there are three forms of cold exposure that has actually been studied. We have cold water immersion. That's the one you're seeing where everyone's plunging into these lakes of frozen lakes, or even doing it in a bathtub, even a barrel. Um, then there's cold showers. Cold showers is the process of having a hot water and then going to cold water for 30 to 60 seconds, then going back to warm water, then back to cold, right? And then there's cold exposure to outside temperatures. All three of those actually have studies and data on them. Now, the interesting thing about cold therapy is that it is very clear that there are pronounced health benefits across the board when it comes to cold therapy. Combined with exercise, we know that cold therapy will increase the the production of mitochondria. Remember mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And the interesting thing about it is we have two types of fat. We have brown fat and we have white fat. So the brown fat is the cool fat. It's the fat that you want to have more of. Traditionally, women have more brown fat than men have brown fat, but we all have brown fat. The concept with brown fat is that when it comes to brown fat, Brown fat actually has mitochondria. And if you know, if you've been here, if you're studying this with me, you know that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It is the energy producer. And so what typically happens when we're exposed to cold temperatures is that the mitochondria start working over time, right? And so what mitochondria actually do, they're, they're, they're effectively using sugar. You know, they're effectively making and using energy and a byproduct of mitochondria is actually heat. So what's happening when we're having cold exposure is that 
on a brown fat level, that mitochondria has revved up its process and is like, whoa, it's on hyperdrive and it's doing some really creative and amazing things. So that is why sometimes you'll hear people say, you know, that this is a regenerative strategy because ultimately what we're doing when we're boosting mitochondria is we're boosting cellular energy, so to speak. And what we know even further is that when it's combined with exercise, we see this even go further. Now, on top of that, we know scientifically that cold water has, has been associated and clinically proven to improve inflammation. Now you see this on the sidelines of your favorite basketball game. Um, what do the athletes do at the end after their bodies have been through all of that? What do they do? They plunge into a cold ice bath or they'll plunge their aching foot or their aching knee into this cold ice bath because it actually will decrease inflammation. Now, when it comes to the brown fat versus the white fat, what actually is clinically shown is that when exposed to cold, that the mitochondria in the brown fat actually increases metabolism. So we see a metabolic increase. So we've seen the benefits of cold therapy being along the lines of improved, uh, insulin resistance. We've seen cold therapy being, um, implemented in mitochondria production. We've seen cold water being implemented in reduction of stress and inflammation. So when we're talking about cold exposure in this way, now let's talk about how that actually can impact male erectile function. So now when you chill the body, the mitochondria begin to work even harder and they start working overtime, right? Metabolism goes up. And when your body senses the cold, it goes into fight or flight mode, right? Your body's like, oh shoot, it's cold, right? You know, you, you think about this, you ever hop into a cold pool, you go, oh, right? Well, when that happens, we are releasing something called norepinephrine and norepinephrine is the fight or flight hormone. And once it gets activated, it tells that mitochondria, tells it to start revving up things and breaking down more sugar, breaking down more fats. Now in the space of mitochondria and what this is actually doing in terms of male fertility, I want you to think, we just talked about norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is the adrenaline hormone, right? But what it also does is once that norepinephrine is activated, it activates something called the release of dopamine. Now, dopamine is a hormone that is responsible for, da -da 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 -da, it's the passion hormone. It fuels, it's, it's fueled by anticipation and excitement. So what we're actually seeing in ice baths or ice therapy or, or cold exposure is that you can actually 2.5 X your dopamine production by doing ice baths. Now, the interesting thing about this is when we think about chocolate and we think about sex, Guess how much that will give you a boost to dopamine two times. So two times the dopamine is great, but if you can get 2.5 times the dopamine, why not consider it? So we're seeing a surge in dopamine, which surges the passion hormones, which makes you feel like having sex, which brings that drive, right? So right along those same lines, I want you to think about it. So we've got the dopamine production, but also what it does is it improves something called mindfulness because when you are in that cold shower, when you're in that cold bath, you're focused, you're breathing, you're breathing, you're focused and you're focused on just trying to make it out of that damn cold, right? So what we know when we are increasing mindfulness are, is that in gentlemen, when we can increase mindfulness, we've improved sexuality in a way where we've helped relieve performance anxiety. It helps you improve sexual satisfaction, create better fantasies, and it can help potentially reduce the use of pornography because what it's doing by creating mindfulness too, is it's tapping into your inner masculine 
in feminine energy by being mindful, by focusing. Now you can focus on bringing that masculine energy out that might make you feel like going out and, and actually having sex with someone, but also the feminine energy comes out too with mindfulness because the feminine energy, I want you to think of feminine energy, like it knows how to get what it wants, right? Um, think about feminine energy as the energy that you have that helps you strategize and get exactly what you want. And the masculine energy gives you the testosterone and the energy to go get it. So by improving mindfulness during these periodic uh, sustained ice baths or cold showers, that can improve sex drive and sexual outcomes. The other part, now, when we talk about erectile function, we talk about how we have to decrease inflammation, we have to decrease insulin resistance, and improve the overall functioning of the blood vessels to boost blood flow, right? Cold therapy is in associated with decreasing insulin resistance, so making your body better able to use the insulin that is there, right? So it's making you more of a lean, mean fighting machine. So when we think about it like that, I want you to also think that insulin resistance is associated and with erectile dysfunction, because what happens when you have insulin resistance is it impairs your body's ability to decrease nitric oxide. Because in order to produce adequate amounts of nitric oxide, we need nitric oxide synthase to be functioning. And what happens when you age, what happens when you have impaired insulin resistance, your nitric oxide synthase doesn't work so well. So you're not making as much nitric oxide. Cold therapy has actually been shown to decrease insulin resistance, which can improve your body's ability to produce nitric oxide. Now, insulin resistance, on the other hand, when you're pre-diabetic or, you know, you're real sensitive to sweets, you eat some sweets and you go to sleep, you get sleepy all of a sudden. Those are all signs of insulin resistance. You're gaining a little bit in the middle, signs of insulin resistance. You've done all this exercise and you can't lose it. That's insulin resistance. Insulin resistance triggers what we call endothelial cell dysfunction. Bam. Endothelial cell dysfunction is basically saying that those cells in the blood vessels that are supposed to be making nitric oxide can't make them so well right now. And because of that, your nitric oxide levels decrease. And because of that, your ability to get hard and stiff has decreased as well. Worst thing about insulin resistance is that it's also associated with cardiovascular disease. So as we improve insulin resistance, we can actually improve erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease. Isn't this stuff amazing? So then we take it one step further, right? Now, let's think back to the way God designed your manly body, right? So you've got testicles that hang down and he's designed them like that so that that so that the temperature in your testicles can be about two degrees Celsius lower than what's your core body temperature is because it's designed to be kind of like your own body's cooling system. They sway and they swagger in the day so that they're actually being cooled. Now, what happens when we're sitting on them all day or, you know, you're wearing tidy whities or you've gained a little weight down there. So now your fat is decreasing the ability for the testicles to swing. What's actually happening now is that testicular function has decreased. You're not making as much testosterone. You're not making premium sperm. You know, the sperm isn't swimming right. It's not living as long. And so there's great data on cooling of testicles. As a matter of fact, they've even created cooling devices that can sit underneath your testicles to kind of be like an air condition so that we can improve fertility. So what we find with cold therapy is that it can actually improve fertility. Ice packs to the testicles. Cooling them has been shown to improve the quality of the swimmers, the quantity of the swimmers. Um, and But what we don't have is any data on how cooling the testicles improves testosterone. But I'm convinced it does because what happens when we're cooling the testicles is it's better. The testicles can actually do their job now. And where does all of our testosterone come from? It all comes from the testicles, right? 
So then last but not least, the biggest way that an ice bath or a cold shower can improve erectile function would be kind of based on a study in the Journal of Biomolecules that was published in July of 2021. They found that whole body cryotherapy, so this is, you know, this is Cryotherapy, this is whether somebody's in a chamber and that cold, uh, you know, nitrogen cold is all around them, or whether they've submerged themselves into a tub of ice water. They found that whole body cryotherapy actually increased the activity of nitric oxide synthase in older men. Listen, nitric oxide synthase is the whole reason why nitric oxide production decreases when we age. The lining of our blood vessels get less and less effective at producing nitric oxide. So any way that we can boost nitric oxide levels is going to be an amazing experience. So guess what? Cryotherapy or cold plunges or cold showers can theoretically increase nitric oxide production, which increases blood flow, which can actually increase stiffness. Now in terms of testosterone, the verdict is out here. They, if you search the internet, you'll find tons of amazing anecdotal stories of guys who've been plunging, plunging their whole bodies into ice baths daily for years. And they have the sustained benefits of really high levels of testosterone. Now it hasn't been studied in a, in a large scale. And I'm looking forward to when it does. So you have to kind of, you know, hinge on what someone tells you works versus what science tells you work. But I'll tell you this, when it comes to cold plunging, I think that what we're going to find is everybody's different. Now for me personally, when I turn on that cold shower and I stand in it and I do the breathing, I feel like a zillion bucks afterwards. So if you, uh, this is, this is, this is how you can try it. Say you've been up all night. You've got to perform. You've got something you've got to do. I want you to try it. And this is the way you inch your way into cold therapy. You turn on your warm shower. You get very comfortable. Then for 30 seconds, you switch it to cold water and you breathe through it. You hum through it. I want you to hum through it because remember humming is going to actually help release more nitric oxide. You hum through it. Mm, you breathe through it and then you turn back to hot. You, 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 in, you, you feel it, right? Then you go back to cold and then you get that jolt again and you breathe through it. I want you to do it three times in a row. And then I want you to start your day and I want you to tell me, come back here and tell me how fantastic you feel. Did you feel like having sex? Did you feel more powerful? Did you feel more like you had harnessed that energy from within that you're having trouble getting out? Listen, cold therapy can help create wonders. Now, I don't want you to just go straight out and jump in an ice bath because your system may not be ready for that, but you can inch towards it by doing simple things like the cold therapy in the shower. So listen, I know cold shower, I know cold water has never been your friend back in the day. And in present day, it is, this is the number one cause of shrinkage, right? But if you can train your body to absorb cold, go from hot to cold, hot to cold, hot to cold. You are training your body to fight a little bit and you're helping it get in back to, to the fighting days. And what you're actually doing is it appears that long-term doing this can actually have a positive impact on your erectile function. Now it won't the, it won't, you know, hop, don't, please don't think I'm saying hop into a cold tub and bam, it's on, but hop into a cold tub, take a cold shower and bam, what you're doing is you're setting the foundation for it to be on. All right. So I'm Dr. Rachel, like this video, share this video and subscribe for updates for the next one. Live free and go hard.